Hello and welcome to video part two of the uh, review for the stats final. This is going to be about picking the right test statistic. So again, you should have hopefully attempted to do this on your own first before you look at these videos. I wanted to first start off by pointing out Appendix I. I've done this before, but this is a uh, decision tree that will help you decide which statistic to use. So I'll just quickly walk through this and then we'll go through the actual examples on the sample final. What I would encourage you to do first as you read a scenario is to identify if you are comparing sample means at all. When you read the scenario, are you identifying that you're comparing a group a, a, an identifiable group, you're comparing their score on something to something else. And you're you're not a variable, but a group. You have a, a sample, a group of people who you're going to get a mean on some value and you're going to compare that mean to something else. If you're going to be doing that, then you're going to be getting one of these statistics either the Z for sample mean, single sample T, independent T related T, one way and over, two way and over. And now you gotta answer how many different sample means do you have? If it's only one, then it's gotta be either the Z for sample mean or a single sample T. And the way you decide between those two is whether or not you know the population standard deviation. Not just any standard deviation, but the population standard deviation. If you do, it's a Z for sample mean. If you don't, it's a single sample T. Again, if there's only one sample, there's only one group, and you're comparing that group's mean to some other value, like chance performance or some known population mean, then you want to use one of these two. Now, on the other hand, if you have two groups uh, or two sample means, you have two choices. It's either an independent T or related T. <clears throat> and the way you need to decide between those is whether or not the two samples, the two groups, the two means that you're going to have, are they coming from <clears throat> groups that have different people in them? If they do have different people, like men and women, or sixth graders and fifth graders, different people, that's an independent T. However, a related T is one where the two sample means are related somehow, and they can be related in some way um, in, in two different ways. One, you can have the same people in both groups. Like I measure everybody in a sample on, a, on task one, and then I measure the exact same people again on task two, and then compare the means on task one to task two. That would be a related samples T because you have the same people in both groups. Another way that this, uh, you can have a related T is if you have different people in the two groups but those two different people are in some way matched. So if you match them on cholesterol level, you have two people with 150 cholesterol and you put one in one group and one in the other. Or if you have a married couple uh, and you want to compare, you put one spouse in one group and the other spouse in the other group. Um, obviously they're not the same people, but they're uh, related, right? Because it's not just any married person, they're married to each other and you have one in each sample. So those samples are related in some way. So that in that situation, you would use a related T. Then finally, if you have three or more groups, it's either a one way ANOVA or a two way ANOVA. If you know that it's three groups, it has to be a one way ANOVA. That's pretty straightforward. Now, uh, the two way ANOVA is a little more complicated in that you have to identify the, the independent variables. Most of the time you're going to have a situation where you have one variable that has two or three groups in it and another variable that has two or three groups in it, most of the time two. And when you cross them, you have four different groups. And we'll see some examples of that in uh, our activity. So I won't go into that right now. So again, these are all of the tests that you know that compare means to each other or some other value. The other tests that you know are the correlation tests, <clears throat> and you have either the Pearson correlation or the Spearman correlation. And so what you really need to do here is identify the two variables 
and then identify how they're being measured. If the two variables are both interval and ratio in scale, they're either both interval or uh, both ratio, or one's interval and one's ratio either way, then that's going to be a Pearson. However, if even one of those two variables is measured on an ordinal scale rather than an interval ratio scale, an ordinal scale again is you know that a given person has more of something than maybe another person, but you don't know exactly how much more. That's an ordinal scale, and so that would mean you'd have to use a, a Spearman correlation. Uh, and on the pick the right test statistic things, I won't be asking you to look at scatter plots, but of course, in a bigger scale of things, um, you might also use a Spearman if you have a scatter plot that suggests that's necessary. Okay, so uh, now we're ready to dive into the uh, actual questions. Question one is a correlation because it's you've got two variables. And um, one variable is height, which is an interval ratio variable, and the other one is popularity rating, which ranges from 0% to 100%, which is also an interval ratio variable. So you've got two interval ratio variables, and you want to see if they're associated with each other, so that's a Pearson's correlation. If someone's height goes up, does their popularity go up? If someone's height goes down, does their popularity go down? You're not comparing groups. You're comparing people's scores or people yeah people scores on variable one and variable two and trying to see if they are related in some way if there's a trend that if one goes up does the other go up if one goes up does the other go down so that's a correlation situation and in this case a specifically pearson correlation situation the next one is a z for a sample mean and that's because you have one sample mean you and uh, the mean is the mean number of words recalled, and you just have one sample, one group, and you're comparing that one group to a population mean. Uh, and you do know the population standard deviation, so that makes it a Z for a sample mean. Okay, and then three is also a Z for a sample mean. In this situation, you again have one sample mean, it's mean religiosity, you're measuring one group of people, you're measuring their mean religiosity, and then you're comparing their mean religiosity to, again, a population mean, and you do know the population standard deviation, so it is a Z for a sample mean. Again, it's not just any standard deviation that you need to know, it's the population standard deviation that you need to know in order to do a Z for a sample mean. For four, it's an independent T, and the reason why is you have two groups and you have different people in those two groups. Uh, you're, you have two different groups of people and you're comparing them on GPA and so that's an independent team. Uh, number five is a one sample T. Again, you have one sample or one group and you're comparing the mean of that one group, it's a test score, their mean test score to chance performance, which is 25%. Now that's not a population mean, but it is a set value of interest. And of course you don't know the population standard deviation because there really isn't the population you're comparing it to. You're comparing it to this chance performance of 25%. So you don't know the population standard deviation. So that makes number five a single sample T. Number six is our first example of a Spearman correlation. You, again, you have two variables, and they were the uh, years of education, but you have to keep in mind how years of education was measured. It was measured on an ordinal scale. Um, it was measured as uh, th through high school, or through junior high, through high school, some college, and completed college, and so, so that's an ordinal scale. You don't know exactly how many semesters or how many years people have, so it's more of, it's an ordinal scale. The other one is also measured on an ordinal scale because it's uh, income and you're measuring that as uh, below the poverty line and then other different categories all the way up to more than a million dollars a year. So both of those are ordinal. You don't know exactly how much more one person has than another if they're in uh, the same or different categories. Uh, so again, this is 
of the relationship between two ordinal variables, Spearman is the correct choice here. Number seven is a single sample T again. You have one group, one sample mean, and you're comparing that to a national uh, acceptable value of seven. Uh, and you do not know a population uh, standard deviation, again, because it's not really a population mean you're comparing it to. It's just this, this professional standard of a seven. Uh, so you don't know the population standard deviation, so number, number seven is a single sample T. Again, just one group, and you're comparing it to a set value. The next one is our first example of a related uh, samples t-test, number eight. Uh, you have um, really one group, but you have um, two sample means coming from that same group. This group rates a sandwich shop on how good their sandwiches are on a scale of one to ten. Then they write some persuasive essay, and the idea here is that the persuasive essay is going to make them think that that um, sandwich was actually better than it was later. Uh, and then a week later, they try it again and they uh, give another rating. So you're rating the same people twice, or you're you're having the the same people twice um, give a rating at time one and give a rating at time two. So that's a related samples t-test because you're measuring the same people twice. The next one is another example of an independent t-test, number nine. You have two groups with different people in the two groups. Uh, and these two groups are using different study methods. And they're going to be compared on their mean number of words recalled. And so this is two groups, different people in two groups, independent t. Number 10 is a, a two-way ANOVA. So again, these are the, the hard, this is probably one of the harder ones. Um, you have um, a variable that is uh, people who get to take sample quizzes and people who don't. So that's one independent variable that has two levels. People either get to take a sample quiz or they do not. And then, um, the other variable is when they take the test. They either take the test uh, after some delay period or really right away. And so you've got two independent variables with two levels each. So by crossing them, again, you have some people who are getting a sample quiz and taking the test immediately. Some people are not getting the sample quiz and taking it immediately. Some people who are um, not getting the sample quiz, you know, all four combinations, right? Uh, so this, and you're crossing them, um, so this is an example of a two-way ANOVA. Number 11 is um, an example of a Spearman correlation again. The first variable you're doing, you don't have a, you're not comparing sample means at all. Um, you're, you have uh, a measurement of everyone on their income that is measured on an ordinal scale again, just like we did in a previous question putting them into categories of below poverty line all the way up to different categories that are higher in to a million a year. Um, and the second variable is number of times they're burglarized, which is a ratio variable. So now we have one ordinal variable and one ratio variable. And in that situation, you have to use a Spearman correlation. And now number 12 is a Pearson correlation. Uh, and the question they're asking is, is, um, is depression experienced by the mother and father of a kid that was just born similar? Uh, so this is really measuring something like post, something called postpartum depression. So if the mother, we, we measure both the mother and the father on their depression level after they've had a kid. And we want to see if they're associated. If the mother tends to be depressed, does the father also tend to be depressed and vice versa? So um, again, you're measuring this depression variable for on the mother and you're also measuring it on the father and you're trying to see if they're related, if they're associated. This would be a Pearson's correlation here because both of those variables are measured on an interval ratio scale because the um, depression score is measured from zero to 88, higher score meaning uh, more depression. So two, uh, interracial variables, you want to see if they're related. 
or associated with each other. Next question is question 13. Question 13 is a one-way ANOVA, um, and it's comparing three groups. You have a group of mothers, or you have a sample of mothers, and you have three different uh, groupings of them. You have 20 that are in a low SES group, 20 that are in a middle SES group, and 20 that are in a high SES group. So that's three different groups of mothers, and you're going to be comparing them on some dependent variable. And so this is a one-way ANOVA. Uh, 14 is also a one-way ANOVA. It's comparing three groups of women this time on a depression score. And you have 75 women, 25 of them work full-time outside the home, 25 work part-time outside the home, and 25 don't work outside the home. So again, you're comparing three groups of women, this, in this case, on depression score. So uh, again, this is a one-way ANOVA. And our last question is a two-way ANOVA. Um, in this case, you have two independent variables. One of them is gender with two levels. And then the other one, the other independent variable is your working situation, just like we said above. So we have a bunch of fathers and we have a bunch of mothers. Um, so that's one independent variable. And then the other independent variable we have is um, people who work outside the home full time, people who work outside the home part time, and people who work outside the, the home never, right? So this would be a two by three factorial ANOVA, two-way ANOVA, because um, one of the variables has three levels, one of the variables has two levels, and so you would combine those. So now you have men who work outside the home full-time, men who work outside the home part-time, men who never work outside the home. And then you have women who work outside the home uh, full-time, women who work outside part-time, women who never do. And so that creates six different groups in this case uh, because you're crossing those two independent variables. So this is a, a two-way ANOVA. And that brings us to the end. Uh, congratulations if you made it this far. Um, if you have any questions, please do email me. Um, and I, I will be uh, doing my very best to respond to emails as quickly as I possibly can.